Welcome, everybody. We are thrilled to be here with you today. Uh, we're going to do some get to know you's in a minute, but just while people are filtering in, let's see, yeah, we still have 60 seconds left. Uh, use the chat and let us know where you're zooming in from, I guess is, is the right term nowadays. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, let us know where you are in the country. I got to compliment everybody who is using the Q&A uh, to share where they're from with chat disabled. Um, so, yeah, uh, great to great to see different team members here uh, from all over the country. Thanks for hopping on uh, and joining us. Uh, we can use the oh, and from out of the country, uh, Cesar, thanks for joining us from Canada. Uh, let's see, we got Minnesota as well. It looks like the chat is working now. Idaho, uh, up in Rexburg, Memphis, Tennessee, more in Canada, Bay Area, Michigan, Mobile, Alabama. Say hi to Ron Franks for me. Uh, India, so oh, Sandeep, how are you? North Carolina, Boulder. Man, I... Uh, so the last awesome. couple of weeks, uh, we've been in the Bay Area, and it's been fun to present live in front of people. Uh, but it's super cool that we can do this and get people from all over the world uh, to gather together. Love it, yeah. Moab, that's it. Red Rocks. <laughs> Pakistan, awesome. Oh, man. Thanks, everyone, for joining. I, I think we'll dive right in. A couple of housekeeping items. Uh, so... Feel free to use the chat. Uh, we'll be able to see it throughout. Um, but there's also a Q&A button in Zoom. And if you use that for any questions you have, we're going to reserve five to 10 minutes at the end for formal question and answer. So anything you submit on Q&A, we'll try to keep track of. Uh, and depending on how much time we have, we'll share uh, answers uh, to questions that get submitted there. Yeah. We are going to dive right into how to ensure a successful customer onboarding experience uh, like I said, we'll get to know each other a little bit better with you here. Um, but my name's Harris, this is Cody, and we're going to be talking about uh, what brings us all to Guide CX, and that is a passion for a successful poll onboarding experience. Um, but first, let's get to know each other a little bit. I'm going to launch a poll, so you should see this if you are logged in to uh, Zoom here, and it's two truths and a lie. So vote for <clears throat> The item you believe is a lie. Yeah, I am the father of four boys. I walked into the White House with the New York Yankees, and I went skydiving the day before my wedding. I, I did uh, do this just a couple of weeks ago in San Francisco, and my uh, confidence was, was it, severely shot. Was it the same ones? or uh, It was the same ones, which now I'm rethinking. Ho hopefully, uh, yeah, we don't have a lot <laughs> Obviously of Obviously, duplicates there. Yeah. But based on the answers that are coming in, I uh, it's pretty even. I, I, yeah, I don't think it was the same same group. Um, but I, yeah, I'm I'm at Guide CX ultimately because I am obsessed with creating great customer experiences. I really believe that it's the spark that leads to you know a successful overall relationship with customers. Um, so with this uh, two truths and a lie, man, it is so split. Uh, we've got. 28% think that it's a lie that I'm the father of four boys. 36% think that it's a lie that I walked in the White House with the New York Yankees. And 36% think that it's a lie that I went skydiving the day before my wedding. Uh, if you voted for number three, you are correct. I was told by my wife, then fiance, that if I ever wanted to go to skydiving, I'd have to do it before our wedding, and I I missed that chance. <laughs> so never gonna happen. Never gonna happen. Uh, but I do have four boys. I love them. Our house is never quiet, uh, but it's always fun. We have a great time. And uh, really quickly on number two. So I grew up in D.C. and my mother worked at the White House. And one day the uh, head of Secret Service was babysitting me, but lost track of me. Uh, at the end of the day, I told my mom, you know, I, he's a great guy, but not a great babysitter, which I think we should all be happy about that uh, he was doing his job. And it was the day that the Yankees came to celebrate a World Series win. And I just kind of got distracted and caught up and just joined Part their the group. Experience. And yep, it's so awesome. Uh, I just kind of slipped right through. So, uh, all right, let's learn a little bit about Cody here. Yeah, super happy to be here. Like Harris mentioned, I'm the, the, the VP of product here at Guide CX. 
I too am very passionate about onboarding. That, that's a truth. So to, to put it up there. Um, as far as my two trips in the lie, uh, number one, I'm also the father of four boys. Number two, I threw an opening pitch at AT&T Park, now Oracle Park in San Francisco. And number three, I caught a pass in Arrowhead Stadium. So the results are coming in. It looks like uh, also the father <laughs> of four boys is trending high, 56%. I, I will admit there, there, there may be some copy and paste in the slides as we're creating this. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's trending in pretty high. So I think at this point, that is the leader. Um, so the truth here is I'm actually the father of four boys as well. Um, I have four boys and one girl. I, I, I have five kids. Um, I did not throw an opening pitch at AT&T Park. I, I wish I had. If, if, if any of you, I, I, I saw someone mentioned there in the Bay Area. Yeah. If you have connections and make that happen. I would love to. <laughs> so, uh, but number three, I did catch a pass at, in, in uh, Arrowhead Stadium where the Chiefs play. Um, I was there with the college team and I was on the field and this quarterback threw me a pass and I felt awesome. Did you for, catch it? I caught it. All right. Felt awesome for a moment. So. Good. Yeah. Um, I'll say I've known Cody <laughs> for years and I was thrown off by this question because I know that he has five kids and the semantics of being a father of four boys uh, definitely got me. Um, but makes him good at his job, attention to detail there. So uh, real quick, we'll touch on the agenda. So we're going to cover the importance of onboarding in your customer journey. We're going to talk about some practical tips that you can take away for a successful onboarding experience. Uh, we're also going to bring it together with the larger customer experience, right? I think we're here because we're passionate, not just about what happens in onboarding, but the impact that has on the overall experience our customers have. A few weeks ago, we announced a big partnership with Gainsight, and we've gotten a lot of questions about that. So we wanted to stack in as much as we can about that integration, that partnership, um, but then also just how you work with customer success teams in general, uh, even if you have a different tool. And then we'll save some time for Q&A at the end. Okay. All right. So we have this customer journey uh, that we're all getting more and more familiar with, right? And we... If we don't know, we need to understand and remember how much retention and growth have to do with multiple positive experiences in the customer journey. Everything from the marketing messaging and the selling cycle to what happens right after a deal gets closed, right? And we're here because we are passionate about onboarding. We believe that's the first dance. That's the first impression. That's your chance to uh, light a spark that you know fans the flame that's going to turn into something great for many years to come. Uh, and that puts you on the path to success or failure if you don't do it right. Uh, yeah, quick quick story there, Harris, like something kind of ran into. So Harris and I both spent time at a, at a startup together. That's, that's where we met the first time. Yeah. And for a long time, I, I ran te a, a technical uh, retention team. So our job was coming in, working with CSMs, entertaining customers. And many times what forced us into the conversation, what forced us to be there was poor onboarding. Um, like more often than not, like yeah. really it is that first step. And if it goes well, you have a solid path for growth, for retention. If it goes poorly, it can really turn that account sideways and cost the company a lot of money. Yeah. And sometimes those customers don't stay. No. Like that experience can be bad enough up front that they don't stay. And what we saw over and over again, uh, especially with some of the customers that we worked with is that poor onboarding sometimes had nothing to do with bad intentions or uh, like or lack of uh, expertise uh, on either team side, it was just lack of communication, lack of understanding, lack of being kept on the same page. And so laying that foundation um, will enable that durable growth in the business. Um, great quote from Rod Cherkis here. Um, if any of you don't know him, I should seek him out uh, on LinkedIn. But uh, yeah, I, I, I trust you all have had a chance to read this, but, but we've seen this over and over again. So as we talk about leveling up your onboarding in general, we want to talk about the customer experience you provide, some tricks on how to make sure that you are providing a good customer experience, and also some reflective questions to know if you're not or if you're missing the mark in any way. And we want to talk about automating communication, forecasting risks, and overall measuring efficiency. So we're going to start with an analogy here. Uh, every one of your customers has come to you thirsty for something. They're thirsty for some value. They've purchased your software or your service because they need something. Uh, and if I were to ask anyone here how you give somebody who's thirsty a drink of water, and I gave you two options, a fire hydrant or a water fountain, 
uh, what do you choose? Fire hydrant every time. <laughs> um, yeah, that guy on the left, he definitely looks wet, but I don't know that he's gotten a drink of water here. Uh, so you see this guy just blasting him with the fire hydrant. And often in onboarding, we are so excited and passionate about the service or the software, the solution that we're providing that we accidentally do this. We just blast everything we know and we kind of get on a roll where it's, you know, well, I'm going to teach them how to use every part of the product. And I've got a very clear plan on how to teach them all the ins and outs and every nook and cranny. And our product is so amazing and they're going to love it so much. And at the end of this, it's going to be great. And the customer, what they experience is what this guy is experiencing. You see how his head's kind of turned, his hands are up. He, he's not, his, his thirst is not uh, being quenched here. Uh, whereas, you know, uh, a simple, elegant solution that uh, can really give him a drink uh, is, is laying there right in front of us. Um, so ask yourself those questions. You know, what did your customer come to you for? And do you know, do you know the specifics of exactly why they're there? And are you giving them an experience that helps them quench that thirst as efficiently as possible rather than just blasting them with every single thing that you've got? The reason this is so important is because people are not afraid to share their experiences. Uh, as we talk about the beginning of the customer journey, this onboarding being so fundamental to the overall retention and growth of your customers, if this process is simple, if it's intuitive, uh, if they feel a sort of ease with you and how they're working with you, it's going to provide that positive uh, jump off point. Um, and they will not be afraid to share it. They'll share it with their colleagues, uh, with people they know inside and outside of the industry. Um, but there's a quote here at the bottom uh, that you should take some time to read or screenshot because uh, in today's day and age, and I think everyone knows this intuitively, but it's worth reminding ourselves, um, not only are you disproportionately rewarded when you do provide that great customer experience, but you get absolutely punished when you don't. Uh, and we don't want to be in that category of uh, getting absolutely punished. Um, so yeah, look at some of these customers in kind of, or some of these companies in the B2C world and how they, what do they do to provide a great experience that we could learn from in B2B? Yeah, and it's, it's the kind of thing like from, from a broad perspective, as we think about like what Guide CX is and what we're trying to do, we're seeing a trend generally where customers, business customers are expecting more of a consumer type experience. Um, they, they, they've basically been, been taught by these like wonderful brands that there is a better path to communicating expectation and process. Um, and really it's, it's the kind of thing where I think there's, a, there's, a, there's this distance in the market today where like people like have their apps on their phone, they love yeah. them, they use them and they go to work and they're like, what is this? Like, how does this work? How does this function? And then like, once you like bring like a third party, like, Hey, I'm working with this new company to integrate some software. It's even more complicated. It's like, not only is it my technology, it's this new technology and it's their team. And yeah, yeah we, we basically we're, we're seeing a demand from, from customers, from the market in general, for more B2C type experiences, things like, like Amazon and their, their, their package tracking, or things like, you know, Pizza Hut and ordering a pizza and having just communication on what's happening in the process. We're seeing that demand come from the, from, from, from the, uh, the, the business cohort really wanting those kinds of experiences. I love how with Amazon, they've even taken it to the nth degree where they take a photo of the package on your doorstep just to make sure you know that it's there. Um, and like Cody mentioned, you know, people want these consumer experiences more in their business world. And I'll add like, even if that's subconscious, you know, think you may be working with somebody who just reviewed an email that they got or a notification they got from Amazon telling them that a package has been delayed, but giving them an update about why it's delayed, when it's going to get to them, making sure that they're fully in the loop on what's happening. They put their phone down and then they come to work with you and they feel like they need to write you an email or get on the phone and ask, where are we? What's going on? What's happening? Like, We need to appreciate the disconnect, even if it's subconscious, between the experience that they have in their B2C life and what they're experiencing in onboarding. And let's try to use some of these tools of automated communication, forecasting risk and end dates, making sure people are in the loop every step of the way to provide that great experience that gets disproportionately rewarded in the marketplace. Yeah, and along those lines, like from a product perspective, and I will admit here, we are Guide CX. So we're gonna talk about Guide CX. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for admitting that. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're in the shirts right now. Um, 
you know, like these, these, these four principles apply to any company, any process. They are just like truths around onboarding and improving the onboarding experience. That being said, from a product perspective, we were deeply invested in that truth. Um, so when it comes to this B2B this experience, that transparency, we released about two months ago, Compass, which is our customer facing experience. Yeah. It's intended to be more of that. I log in as a customer. I see where things are at. I know what's, what, what I should be doing, what my team should be doing. I know what the vendor should be doing. It's really intended to be like that, that, that kind of experience. So sm small plug there for, for Guide CX. That's, that's one of our driving principles. How can we level up the onboarding process? Yeah, how, how, how can we provide something like this? You know, that, that um, FedEx founder famously said that one day the information about the package will be just as important as the package itself. And we want to bring that experience to your customers as they go through onboardings with your teams. We want them to have this clear, clean portal that just helps them know exactly where they are, um, see exactly what's happening on your team side and what they need to do um, so that they can go from that experience on their phone to their experience with you and your team and feel the same level of uh, in the know-ness, I'll say. Uh, the next principle there is automating communication, right? Um, make sure that you meet people where they are. Make sure that they understand what's happening in a way that doesn't burden your teams internally and make sure that the customer feels that connection and that communication. Um, this can go a long way just in having a decrease in escalations. Um, if, if this is something that you measure, and I, I wanna put an asterisk around if, uh, you should be measuring the number of escalations and how often those are coming through. Uh, and if you can get creative about automating communication, the right communication at the right time, you should see less and less of that come through. Um, something that we, provide uh, again on the guide CX side is that automation uh, via the templates that you build out, right? Um, so whether it's instructions, dependencies, durations, um, you can automate those things out for your customers. Uh, th this one uh, it excites me particularly because it's something that where if you put the work in to write out clear task instructions and then connect the daisy chain on the dependency for when this should be sent to someone, then you make the assignment and you even put a duration for how many days you know, this thing should take. Um, all of a sudden, you're gonna feel like you've got an assistant uh, who's managing who knows what and when they know it and when they're getting status updates. So everything from the overall project reviews to specific tasks to forecasts or calling out celebrations of a milestone being completed, like all of that can be taken off your team's plate. And then the customer feels like, oh, I, I know what's happening. I'm, I'm in the loop here. Forecasting risks is the next one. Uh, we, we mentioned this example of the late package, right? So giving transparency uh, is critical after you've established confidence and collaboration with your customers. Um, so if they feel confident that you know what you're doing, if they understand that you know how to get to the promised land, get them up and running, help their teams get the value that they were thirsty for when they originally signed up for you, if you've got all that in place, then forecasting risk can actually build confidence, uh, not hurt it. Uh, and to that point, you, you want to kind of ask yourself, is the data that you have like a rocking chair? Uh, like Cody mentioned, we, we've worked a lot together in the past and there's one customer uh, in particular that I remember us flying out to visit, uh, they'll remain nameless, uh, but this is, this is a big company uh, that, we're sitting there and we're in their boardroom and Cody's doing his thing on the whiteboard and it's like watching Mozart on the piano as he's uh, taking, oh, them, taking them through <laughs> kind of what they what they can do to leverage all the data they have. And especially at large companies, you know, there's so much data available. Um, and at small companies, there should be so much access to the data that you have. But I remember just feeling like, man, like, it's not being used the way that it should. They're not getting out of this what they should. And it's like, you know, they, they've got a, a rocking chair where it gives them something to do, but it doesn't get them anywhere. And that's something that we are passionate about trying to help you avoid in your onboarding experiences. So we want to provide data for you. You know, part of the reason we built this company and created this category of software for customer onboarding is hey, it's fine if you have a system that can manage tasks and projects and maybe even alerts, but what about a system that speaks to you and says, hey, overall, these are the high points and the low points in your process. 
Here's where customer satisfaction is high and low. Here's where you're going faster or slower than you expected. Yeah. If you have that, then you can actually do something. You can have some insight and some intelligence to go to your teams and say, hey, here are the projects. And in Guide CX, you have this reporting section that'll show you a list of all the projects that are forecasted to finish in the next seven days. Um, and from a product perspective, those are those forecasted dates are based on the velocity and some of the automation that we talked about earlier, like how long should this take? What's it dependent on? Who needs to do it? And so it's calculating that forecast on a daily basis. It's refreshing that calculation. Um, and then at the very bottom there, you'll see two that say projects at risk and projects, uh, what projects are ahead of schedule this month. And those will show you lists of, hey, these are the projects that are forecasted to finish later than you planned for them to finish as you enter your planned end date. These are the projects that are forecasted to finish earlier than you anticipated. Um, and so having all that at your fingertips helps, it will help you go to your teams uh, and make a big impact on, hey, this is what we need to change. This is exactly what we need to dial in uh, in our process. And then you can start to measure, you know, who on your team is an outlier, how much is each phase of this costing your company, um, and it can help take you from data being a kind of an activity where you've got a rocking chair and you've got something to do to really uh, affecting change in your organization. Um, and these, these reports, uh, as I'm sure everyone has been through, will help highlight each one of not only the areas of your process, like the template, the task, the milestone that need attention, but also team members who are going faster or slower or who are seeing higher or lower customer satisfaction throughout their process. Yeah, so really quick to, to recap what Harris hit on and to kind of reaffirm that point. Like really, these are obviously, we feel that we have a solution that solves for these problems very well. But generally speaking, as you're thinking about your onboarding process, how to make it a, a delightful experience, it really is, you know, step one, level up that customer experience, like focus on the customer, on their needs, take a very problem user centric approach to how you view, view onboarding. Focus on automation and communication. Obviously like this creates efficiency. I wouldn't say like these four are like exclusive to each other. Like there tends to be overlap between these, but automating communication really establishes ex uh, expectation and lets people know that they're being heard and that you're talking to them. Uh, number three, forecast risks. This helps you identify problems early and, and respond because things do go sideways sometimes. Yeah. Like, like companies like Amazon, there are times that a package is delayed. Yeah. It does happen. Um, but if people know about it and, and if you're flagging risk and informing appropriately, you can turn a negative into a very positive experience. Yeah. And number four, measure efficiency. Um, with that in mind, we, we thought it'd be interesting to kind of pivot, pivot beyond this and kind of step away from just onboarding to the actual customer journey. And what's happening there. Before I dive into this, I do want to throw out a reminder that we are going to do Q&A at the end. So if you have any questions as we're walking through any of this content, please drop those in there. Um, try, try to stump us. <laughs> you probably will stump us. <laughs> um, but can I, can I step into this and kind of take out those four key principles and pivot them slightly? Onboarding is one step and hopefully a, a very long customer journey. I'm sure all of you care deeply about having customers for, for a lifetime if possible. Yeah. Um, so if we kind of think beyond that, like where, where I'm worried fits and having improved the whole experience, the macro level experience, it really is leveling up that customer experience across touch points. So it's not just the onboarding team working with the customer, it's multiple teams working with the customer in a, in a, in a very cohesive way. When it comes to automated communication, it's not just automated communication with the customer, but also with other teams. And when it comes to like um, raising up a successful customer, it takes a village. Yeah. It's not just one, one team or one person. The whole company has to be, has to be focused on that experience. What's happening there. I was actually just on a call with a CSM, uh, at a company this morning who we we're talking about this dynamic. And they said like, man, like the more I can get from that onboarding team before it gets to me, the better I know how to help the customer get from where they are to successful growth, renewal, expansion, but really making sure they get that value that they came thirsty for in the beginning. Yeah. Exactly. It really is. It's that, that handoff kind of clean process. I, I think all of us can probably wholeheartedly embrace the fact that communication is, is difficult. I, I think most things in life break down um, based communication. on communication and, yeah. lack, and a lack of communication. Yeah. Um, number, number, number three, we're going to pivot out slightly and it's not just forecasting risk, it's forecasting and sharing risk, yeah. <laughs> which obviously is part of that it's communicating one thing to know it. It's another thing to make sure people know what's make happening. Make sure everyone knows about it, and including the customer, um, and really kind of find ways to mitigate. 
And number four, it's measuring efficiency, not, not just within the onboarding process, but across processes, across the whole cycle. And I, I will say like the, the efficiency side of the house, sometimes we don't speak as heavily about, like we're, we are guide CX, we care deeply about customer experience. But when it comes down to it, if your teams are more efficient and your partnering teams are more efficient, you have more time to focus on experience. Yeah. yeah. So we want to really make things more efficient. Um, with that in mind, we're going to talk about, like, like, Harris, uh, like Harris mentioned at the beginning, we're going to talk about the, the Guide CX Gainsight integration. Um, we announced it about a month and a half yeah. ago or so. And the reason we're going to do this is because it does, it does a great job of demonstrating what that could look like. So in this case, Guide CX really is an onboarding platform. Gainsight is really focused on retention and customer success. Um, but first, let's talk about kind of like how most companies, like what they encounter in this space. So on the right-hand side of the slide, we have the customer up top. We have an onboarding team. We have a, a success team. And they are trying hard to work with each other. We have a mess. We have That's a mess. Like. There's there's emails, there's texts, there's calls, there's meetings, there's there's siloed environments and systems. It's it's not super repeatable and it's chaotic in nature. Um, I imagine many of you have probably found like seen things like this, where just it's kind of all over the place. Everyone's doing different things. And really that variability makes it very, very hard to improve. Um, it's hard to actually measure experience what's happening. It's hard to improve it. Um, the ideal state, and this is kind of how we focused um, our, our key drivers for this integration, is creating consistency, an established communication paradigm, automation, and analytics across teams with a customer as the key driver there. So obviously, Guide CX is working with that customer from the onboarding process. Gainsight is being used to really nurture that relationship, but we're ensuring that those two teams work together across the board. And ultimately, that measurement and automation drive efficiency. And Efficiency drives better experience. Um, so kind of digging into step one here, leveling up, leveling up that customer experience across touch points. Um, what we've done here is we've created a tight integration between Guide CX and Gainsight for project and task views. And actually, as of yesterday, we're also adding notes. Because you know, as, as of yesterday. As of yesterday. You're getting it live here first. <laughs> we're getting it live. So we're going to add notes as well so that we can have a clean handoff process between the onboarding team and the CS team. And not just handoff, but also just communication throughout the life cycle. So this really is foundational. This is establishing the data paradigm between Guide 6 and Gainsight yeah. to give the CS teams that data they need. Um, I will say, putting on the CS hat, I'm not sure every, every CSM is going to log in here and look at this every day. So with that in mind, as part of the step two in this flow, we are trying very, very hard to embrace this managed by exception philosophy yeah. that, that Gainsight and many CS platforms um, they take care of. So in this case, we have three types of CTAs, calls to action, that we embrace our integration. And we're really trying to automate that communication between the teams. So the first one is handoffs, informing the, C the CSM that, hey, there's a deal going live soon, a customer going live soon. Be aware of that. Like, here's the date yeah. that we're anticipating. And here's the notes. Like, be fully aware of what's happening. Um, and like, historically, I'm sure many of you have seen this, that's a meeting, a series of meetings, impromptu phone calls, text messages. Back to that first diagram, it's, it's a chaos of communication. Um, we're trying to have a clean handoff there. We're also doing a tight task, uh, guide CS task to Gainsight CTA integration, where CSMs can operate from the, the Gainsight paradigm in the place that makes sense to them. So when it comes to any kind of software and any kind of process that you're, they're pushing on, change management can be a really difficult thing. Yeah. So we're trying hard to embrace that philosophy. And as you think about this for your organization, embrace the tools that work right for the teams. So um, with the task integration, a CSM could close a task uh, that's, that's assigned to them in Guide, in Guide CX and automatically have it close out in, in Guide CX. And last, um, maybe the most important in this conversation is risk, like flagging risk early, um, kind of really identifying there's things happening in this account that CSM you should be aware of like things that you can do to step in and really try to help and, and streamline and ensure that they, that, that, that they come in in a positive state, um, that they're not going to be um, something of, of, of a lost cause from day one. Yeah. Like have them in a solid place. I want to quickly read a couple of the mm -hmm. questions that have come in. Uh, one was just a very kind compliment uh, saying shout out to Ken and Logan, two uh, guides here uh, at Guide CX, who helped us develop some BI executive reports and customer executive reports. We use them daily and automate them weekly. Um, on longer implementations, is there anything um, through the platform to reduce fatigue? 
so one thing uh, that we see that helps reduce fatigue is making sure that you manage how much you're giving each person at each time. So go through and make sure that the task chunks, the kind of the groups of tasks that you're assigning to different team members uh, are getting to them with uh, a reasonable amount. I'd recommend no more than two to three tasks get assigned at a time, preferably one to two. And then the other thing I'll say real quick is celebrations. So we have milestone completion messages. So you, at the end of a milestone, you can toggle a message to be sent out that would celebrate. Um, so another way to reduce fatigue, helping make sure people feel progress and they know where they are and they feel uh, you know, a bit of reward or celebration um, to do that. Yeah. Um, another one that came through is how do you handle customers that come in and want to onboard on different timeframes? Some wanna go fast, some wanna go slow. So, uh, and, and then do you define and ideal do you define an ideal time frame uh this one is i think really important for us in the onboarding community to try to take control of uh you you do have customers who come and say oh yeah you know we're we're going to implement this next year but we bought it now and then you have some customers who say this needs to be done this week it's on us to help them get to value as fast as they can um, even if they're telling you, no, no, don't worry, we've got all the time in the world, uh, I promise that introduces risk. So try to find ways to help incentivize and entice them um, to get involved and get some value out of it right away. There's nobody, no matter what they say, who wants to pay for something but not get value out of it uh, for quite some time. So, so try to keep those time frames as, as tight and engaging as you can. Love it. Yes, yeah, so number three here, um, forecasting and sharing risk in, in the gain side paradigm and many CS platforms that take this approach generally, um, we are really embracing the, the health scores and trying hard to circle like when there, when there is risk involved in the process. So onboarding has a series of touch points. There are indicators to success or health that we can automate. And it really is, in the case of, of, of integration, pushing kind of key elements through that can be weighted differently depending on, on the account and, and, and the company. Like things you care about in, the, in that process. So yeah, really strive to forecast and share risk um, between the onboarding process and your general customer journey. Um, there was a question here as well from, from Cesar related to um, integrations with uh, tools like Zendesk. Um, we are as a company and we're kind of seeing this, this philosophy playing out pretty true. Back to that kind of change management statement I made, um, onboarding tools have to really, uh, or the onboarding process has to really integrate well with other processes. Yeah. So like in the case of Zendesk, um, our, our teams are actively working on um, a tight integration there where we can push content over. Um, in the case of GameStop, like you've already seen, we're doing some deep integrations yeah. between the platforms to really push communication. But we're finding that, yeah, so much core data to that customer's initial experience lives in Guide. So the better we can get that out to make sure that, uh, Cesar, to your point, people who are in Zendesk or in uh, a tool like Gainsight, they have access to it. Yeah. And um, last thing I want to call here, number four, it's, it's measuring efficiency across process. So in this case, we are, we're, we're, we're exposing onboarding data in the CS experience. We're trying to kind of show things that are happening. And obviously, we've been getting in deeper with this. Like the, the data's in Gainsight. We can do some really neat things to start kind of like, you know, figuring out how things are being handed off. You know, based on trends in the onboarding process, are they healthy long term? Um, I, I believe strongly in, in data and data sharing, data dissemination. Um, prior to coming to Guide CX, I spent about 10 years working, working in data. And uh, data is king. Like when it comes to onboarding and CS, data is king. You have to have it. The so, information about the package is just as important as the package itself. It yeah. is. So with that in mind, we, we do feel uh, very strongly that you know, these onboarding processes, these truths do, do carry over to the CS process. As you think about your customer journey, onboarding really is that a critical first step. It's the one that really drives long-term uh, success. Um, but it has to be thought, thought of in, in the bigger context of that customer journey. It's, it's one important step and, and hopefully a very long journey. Um, with that in mind, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we really appreciate it. Um, feel free to reach out to us to talk more about this. Um, yeah, and, th and thank you for the great questions. We, I, I'm trying to type some answers here uh, before we close. We definitely have a couple more minutes to stay on if you want to throw more questions in, uh, but we've gotten a lot. Uh, we appreciate the engagement literally from all over the world. 
Uh, we love working with you. We love partnering with you. This is something that hopefully you can feel the passion about. Um, so we love our product and our integrated partners. Uh, but even if you just want to learn more uh, about our philosophies and our thinking and how we arrived at this and why we started this company and why we created this category of software, please reach out. We put a phone number here. You can chat with us on our website. You can email us sales at guidecx.com. There's CSM at guidecx.com, support at guidecx.com. We, we want to hear from you and, and interact with you uh, to help you create the best possible experience you can for the customers you're working with and onboarding. Uh, we believe that if we all do that successfully together, uh, we're going to see great long-term success and partnerships uh, with everyone we work with. So thanks again. Uh, we'll, like I said, we'll stay on for a few minutes uh, for the questions to keep rolling in, but have a great day. And we hope to see and talk to you soon. Say goodbye to everyone. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ditto. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, uh, Yu Chun, thank you. Uh, we, we appreciate it. Thanks for joining. Thanks for hopping on. Um, a lot of you joining late at night or early in the morning, your time. Um, maybe, maybe next time we do this, we'll, it should be our middle of the night and their regular work day. <laughs> uh, yeah, really great to engage with you. Here's another one that's coming through, any suggestions? Oh yeah, so this is a great question. Awesome question. Any suggestions on data acquisition where spreadsheets are required? Um, if I'm, I'm gonna interpret this question a little more, please uh, correct me in the chat if I'm wrong. But uh, I think the question is, I, I as a, as a provider who's onboarding someone, I require data acquisition. I need to get some data from the customer and it, the spreadsheet is required, but my customer hates them. So what's the best way to acquire that data? Like, how can I ask my customer, hey, I need you to fill out this form or I need you to send us this information. It's critical to your onboarding. And if I can guess, uh, onboarding falls down when those things don't happen. And you might get an escalated situation where the person who signed the contract calls the salesperson. Um, this has never happened to us in our past lives, but they call the salesperson and they say, hey, we're still not up and running. And then you go and you do your due diligence and you find out from your team that, well, we asked them to provide us with all this data and they still haven't. So no, we can't. Um, and this happens all the time when data acquisition is a necessary part of onboarding. Um, so how do you make that a little smoother? How do you help the customer have an easier experience with it? Yeah, there's, Did you have something? there's, there's a technical call out there. So, so one, I've got a third, just so you know, there are three things. There's, there's, there's three things. Um, so, you know, really we talked about onboarding and CS on this call today. Like those are kind of, those are a, a further step in the process. There's, there's a sales process. A lot of times some of that data will come out in the sales process. Yeah. So we found a lot of um, a lot of strength in capturing some of that through our CRM and passing it through into Guide CX, kind of like as a launch yeah. point. So one, like not asking for it twice if if that is happening. Um, secondarily, I guess kind of a second perspective there is is creating more established paradigms. So like on, on the product side, for example, we released a, a CSAT feature recently, yep. um, about about a month ago. Um, we'll talk more about that in our coming release. But we're also kind of bullish on, on the form concept. Where can we do things to streamline that and actually make it more part of the process? Instead of saying, hey, you have, you know, you have this onboarding platform, but you're gonna manage like spreadsheets outside of that. We're trying to find ways to bring that into the product and make it a lot more intuitive. So like one step could be a data capture step. And right here, where you are, yeah. you fill out this information. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and today, like a lot of our customers, we'll, we'll, we'll do that like with attachments yeah. on tasks. Yeah. Like we already had the capabilities. We're looking at ways to make it even easier over time. Yeah. I actually don't have anything that there is no, no. third. You're, you're right. There There's are only two. Um, <laughs> I'll just underscore a couple of things. As far as getting information on the sales side, um, when you mentioned clients hate them, frowny face emoji there, uh, sometimes that does come from, and maybe they don't tell you this directly, but sometimes that comes from, we're being asked for this again. Um, but in other cases, you're asking them for something much more detailed than what they would give in the sales process. But I would still encourage you to use that principle, of push up into the sales process a little more heads up that this is coming. So maybe arm your sales team um, to know, hey, or, or to share with the customer, hey, you're brand new, we're excited. 
by the way, you're going to see something like this soon. You know, please prepare to fill it out or get it in the right person's hands um, so that at least it's a seed. You know, your sales team doesn't need to be doing that kind of follow up of data capture for them, but they should be maybe planting that seed that it's coming. Um, and then second is for anything that is particularly tough. Um, try to find a way to make it digestible. So earlier we talked about reducing fatigue and a lot of times fatigue comes from just overdoing it, kind of burnout where it's like, hey, I've been assigned too many tasks or if this spreadsheet that you're referencing has a hundred lines, somebody may open it up and go, oh, not right now. Not today, uh, you know, maybe I can fill this out next week. Um, so try to find a way to have this data acquisition come in bite-sized chunks if it has to be all done at once, I guess maybe that if I uh, do want to add a third thing, I would recommend, and if this is a repeated problem, change the way you're asking for it. Maybe do it in a joint call where you're getting the information over the phone from them. Um, be really creative internally. Uh, use the data that you've got in Guide CX to figure out what the high points and low points are. And if this is a low point, get creative about doing it differently. Hey, we've always sent this spreadsheet and asked for it back have one person on your team try calls. Say, I'm going to do a one hour call or a 45 minute call or however long it takes. And I'm going to try to run through the whole thing with the customer um, and A, B test that. See, hey, maybe that works well. Uh, and now you can roll it out across, across your teams. Um, thank you all so much. Uh, I, I, I think we're, we're going to let everyone get back to their day. We could probably stay here uh, chatting about onboarding all day. We, we, we might need to do like a talk show, like a call and talk show. I think that's exactly what everybody yeah. wants. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, we, but yeah, again, we, we appreciate it. Uh, please reach out, um, stay in touch. We're, uh, we're thrilled to be on this journey with you um, to not only create this category of software, but lead it and, and help the, the world give better experiences to their brand new customers. So Thanks again. Uh, have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.